Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to discuss the problems with drawing lines. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do have the premium list. You can find that in the description below as well. Let's go ahead and jump in. So one of the things I've seen is I, I've seen people draw a certain line, okay? And, and I wanna discuss why using a single line to try and identify a future market cycle peak might not be the smartest idea, okay? Now, one of the things we will say, of course, is that you'll find me sometimes drawing lines on my own charts, right? I think it's sometimes fine to do. Um, for instance, when we look at the prior market cycle top, we'll go over and say, all right, guys, we, we drew a line across. And, and, and if we do that for, say, one, one or two cycles, you can see that once we cross it, we never really seem to go back to it. Now, with that said, one of the things, just quickly off course, one of the things that we've noticed is if you actually divide that by M2, right, the money supply, we did test it, right? We already did test the prior all-time high. And this is something we said back in, in June and July when it was actually unfolding. You know, we said, hey guys, we're already testing it, right? We're already testing it if you account for the increase in the money supply. But what I really wanna talk about, okay, what I really wanna talk about is a certain trend line that I, I, I see going away, uh, going around, making its rounds around, around crypto Twitter, on a lot of different YouTube channels. And, and a lot of you have probably seen it. And the line I'm talking about is this one. Okay, you probably already know what I'm talking about. It's this one. And the reason it could present a problem is not to say that we can't, you know, not to say that we can't reach it, but if you are planning on basically betting the family farm on Bitcoin hitting that trend line, well, might not work out the best, okay? But I wanna show why. I wanna show why just simply drawing a line can, can often be somewhat misleading and, and not, not give you the best results, okay? And the way we can do that is a lot of people, when they pull up Bitcoin, they, they pull up this chart, right? If you go to a lot of exchanges, this is, this is how far back it goes. Um, and, and they just look at these, these two peaks. They draw one line, they connect this peak to this peak and say, all right guys, that's the top. The next peak will be at this trend line, let's say the end of the year. And, and when it hits it, when it hits it, it should be around by, let's say the end of December, around $314,000, around $314,000, okay? And, and they just simply use this line to say, this is where Bitcoin is headed by the end of the year. Now, the problem with that is that you're literally drawing a line through two points. So it's definitely dubious speculation, right? And we can, we at least understand that when people draw lines like that, it is nothing more than dubious speculation. And that's fine. We do dubious speculation on this channel all the time. But again, call it what it is, dubious speculation. The danger with this approach is that if you use this approach on the prior cycle, you would have been waiting forever. Because if you actually pull up a price chart that shows the first peak of Bitcoin, and let's say you, you decided you were gonna go with the same approach last cycle. Well, what you would have done, and again, it neglects the 2011 peak on, on a lot of the charts, but some of the charts actually have that 2011 peak. If you had done the same exact thing and said, all right, I'm gonna take a move, and I'm gonna start from the top in 2011, I'm gonna draw a line through 2013, and I'm gonna extend it out. And what that would tell me is that by December of 2017, the price of Bitcoin should be around $484,000 by, by December of 2017. So imagine at the time, if you were using this strategy to time your exit on the market, and this is all you saw, and someone told you that it had to go up to this trend line because it hit this peak and this peak, you'd be waiting forever. 
we're never going to catch this trend line now, right? We're never going to catch it. It, it, it never, it's never going to happen. Why is it never going to happen? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, if you continue to extend that trend line out, you can see that you can see just how far above it we are. Okay. Um, and if I, if I were to draw it out to say like the current day, you can see that this would be approximately, let's see, 934. So $98 million. So it's 98,736,934 million, dollars. Clearly, Bitcoin is never going to keep pace with that, right? Bitcoin is not going to go to $100 million anytime soon. And if by some miracle, Bitcoin is able to make it to $100 million, which I really doubt. Um, but if some, if some miracle it is able to make it to $100 million in, in like 100 years or something, well, this trend line by that time is going to be at, you know, quadrillions of dollars um, or, or even higher. OK, because again, this is a logarithmic scale. So. If we took that same approach last cycle, it would not have worked out at all, right? At all. It, it might have looked like it was going to work out, right? If you just looked at this line and you're like, oh, well, yeah, all we have to do is we just got to go up a little bit more, right? A little bit more. We never made it. The challenge is I, or one of the things I see happening throughout, throughout the cryptoverse is people are drawn, drawing this line. And they're saying, all right, we're going to make it to that line. And, and, and that's when you cash out, right? They'll say, that's when you cash out, when we make it to that line. This again is a logarithmic scale. So it can look like we're going to make it to the line, but we could easily fall short of it. Now, the best chance that we have to make it to the line, because we're not going to definitively say we can't make it, but to assume that we have to make it is, is probably irresponsible. In order to make it to this line, the price of Bitcoin, probably the best bet would be to do so in the fourth quarter of the year. OK, and in order to get to this line, we would need to go over by, let's say, if it happened by December. And I'm going to maybe I drew it a little bit too. Uh, let me let me draw it a little bit more conservatively. So I'm doing it justice. Um, we would have to go to around a third of a million dollars. So maybe approx approximately three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars by December to make it to that line. And if we don't make it there by December, which again, I know a lot of people are, are calling for a market cycle peak in December. And again, I, I we'll keep an eye on it. Let's just say that, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, I, a lot of people are calling for a market cycle peak in December. So what Bitcoin would have to do to get to that line would basically be to just go straight up, right? It would just have to go straight up from now until then. If we were to overlay Let's say we overlaid the move that Bitcoin made here from, say, 10K up to this move here and then overlaid it from the move that we just started. We still wouldn't make it there like we still wouldn't make it there. And this would top out in January if we just overlaid the move from 10K to 60K. It still would not make it there. And you guys remember that move. That was one hell of a move. Right. If we extended that move to start today, even after the fact that Bitcoin just moved from 29K to 51K, if we had it start today, we still wouldn't make it to that line. And, 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 and it wouldn't even peak out until March of 2022, when then the line would be corresponding to four hundred thousand dollars. OK, so I'm trying to just put in perspective how unlikely it is for us to actually hit that line. Now, would I like for us to hit the line? Of course. I would love for Bitcoin to hit that line. If Bitcoin hits that line, I mean, a lot of us are going to be happy, right? A lot of us would be happy in the event that that happens. The problem is that if you are counting on something like that to happen, then you might be waiting for something that's never going to happen, just like it never happened back over here. If you had been waiting for this trend line from these two prior data points, it never happened. So that's the issue I see when using a trend line to try to identify a market cycle peak. I think that that using that and, and saying that it's going to go to that level just because that's a line we can fit through two data points. It's probably not the best strategy. OK, and I say that recognizing that I myself have plenty of models where we could argue similar type things. OK, this is why we call all of it dubious speculation, right? It's, it, a lot of it is just dubious speculation nothing more, nothing less. 
And so let's call it what it is. Let's not pretend like drawing a line through, through the prior two peaks, which again, market cycle peaks are largely irrational. So pretending like we can make sense of them and, and exactly predict a future peak just by drawing a line through them then again, I mean, you know, it really, it really calls into question the validity of that. Now, what if the prior peak over here had been had been higher? Okay, maybe you could argue at that point it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more valid, right? Like if this peak had gone up to this level, and and then it came down, and then this one, we had one peak, two peaks, and then we showed, okay, we have a third peak on it. Then maybe we could discuss. All right. Maybe it's possible, right? Maybe maybe there's some validity to it. But two peaks, this peak and this peak, this peak would have never come close to hitting it. So if we're gonna use this line and this line to, to justify what's going to happen, I mean, this is basically saying that diminishing returns don't exist and that we're gonna go to 300K um, or let's say a third of a million dollars by December and then by, by 2025, um, we're going to be at at um, five million dollars. Five million. Um, it would be five million and sixteen thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollars. So the problem with this approach is that it, I mean it's essentially just assuming that that we can continue to put in very similar gains just over and over and over again. Um, but that's actually highly unlikely, um, especially considering our early information to say, actually, this does not look like a straight line. It looks more like a curve, right? It looks more like a curve over a logarithmic regression curve, if you will. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember to check out the premium list if you want to know how I'm navigating these markets. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, click the bell icon to turn on your notifications, and I will see you next time. Bye.